Well, if you're an American race fan at Capacity Austin today and you went there to have a look at the new world champion, see what he was all about, I think you would have been pretty impressed. Pole for the uh, sprint race, won that in the shootout, led from start to finish, well, almost from start to finish. Maybe Charles Leclerc was just in front going into the first corner. And to top it all, right in the middle of the shootout at the end of SQ2 when his medium tyres were pretty worn, Max had a nice lose at the top of the hill. It wasn't the quickest part of the S's, it was at the top. 360 though, great car control, kept it all going and then got the pole in SQ3. More on that in a moment. But yeah, started from the pole in the sprint race on the clean side of the grid. But a next to him, Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. The Ferrari always makes good starts these days. Just take it for granted. Both Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc always quick off the line. No doubt that was in Max's mind, but he made a good start as well on the outside, on the clean side, but sort of arrowing in towards the inside of that uphill first left-hander but Charles alongside him and almost off the road on the left Max easing him on the left just on the edge of what you can do I think both into the first corner and Lewis watching all this thinking yeah I'll try it around the outside very very close in the middle of turn one between Max and Charles but, but Max held it on exit and got the run down the hill into the next right-hander but there was Lewis now on the outside of Charles kept it going out on the curbs and into P2 and that kind of defined the race surprisingly actually surprising that Charles Leclerc then got beaten by Lewis Hamilton to the tune of five six seven eight seconds towards the end of the race Part of that was a point that Max Verstappen made after the race, which is that they are running a lot of wing here. It is a high downforce circuit, but there is a long straight. So the effect when you get into DRS is quite marked. So you can make up for quite a lot of straight line speed deficiency if you're within the all important DRS activation zone. And uh, that's what we saw, I think, with Lewis Hamilton initially. That's how he was able to get away from Charles Leclerc. But Charles in the Ferrari, much quicker as we've seen, as we saw yesterday, in a straight line natively without DRS. So it was interesting to see that Charles couldn't do anything about the Mercedes as the race progressed. Max did his usual thing, controlled the race beautifully, not particularly quick right at the start, just making sure that everything settled down, a few gusts of wind caught him by surprise, great reflexes on display as well there. But then after four or five laps, he started to pull away from Lewis at approximately half a second and then a second a lap. Not massively quick through sectors one and three, as you'd expect, just looking after the tyres, looking after the car, but using that top speed of the Red Bull to get away in sector two. And of course, he's always going to be good through sector two, through the high speed change in direction as well. So really nicely judge race for Max Verstappen. Very clean win, very clean race, actually. No safety cars, no incidents at all apart from i guess basically say george russell who got a penalty after the shootout for balking charles leclerc and when it happened it was an sq2 i think it was sq2 charles caught uh, george and george just was just didn't know he was there basically and charles had to back out of the lap and just and charles got on the radio and said ah penalty thank you mr russell uh, so and that's what happened. He indeed did get the penalty. And he got another penalty quite early in the race as well for exceeding track limits in trying to get past Oscar Piastri. And he got on the radio saying, oh, he forced me off. It was one of these things where, I mean, what did he think? Piastri wasn't going to use all the road on the exit of a tight left hand. Of course, Oscar was going to do that. And there was George on the outside. And to my mind, uh, that, was, that was a justifiable penalty because there's no way you could expect Piastri suddenly to exit in the middle of the road. Uh, why would he? So it was, that's how they finished. Max Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton and Charles Leclerc. A bit of a battle behind that. Lando Norris eventually finished fourth, mainly because Ferrari decided to start Carlos Sainz uniquely on the soft tyre, everybody else on the medium. And I couldn't work that out. There were suggestions after the race. David Coulthard said, oh, you know, maybe it was Ferrari fact-finding for the race tomorrow just to see what the soft tyre would do. Well, you know, the expense of two or three places for Carlos Sainz, I, I find that hard to believe. Um, but I suppose there is no other explanation. Carlos on the soft tyre amazingly actually brought the car home and finished just ahead of George Russell. George Russell got past him a couple of times, but then Carlos got in front again, astonishingly beating beating George on the road. Really impressive management of the soft tower. I was amazed they ran as long as they did, actually. So there was Carlos who finished P6, just behind um, Sergio Perez, who was a desultory 
P5 in the Red Bull. Nothing like his team leader, shall we say that now? Yes, I think we can say that. Uh, yeah, so Sergio Perez fifth. So Carlos Sainz obviously was quite quick early on. And as those soft tyres began to lose grip, of course, he held up the races of drivers like Lando Norris. So Lando lost a lot of time. And by the time he got past Carlos, he wasn't really in a position to challenge Charles Leclerc's P3. Pierre Gasly drove very well to finish seventh, I thought, in the Alpine, wearing this, uh, wearing the helmet, the Francois Sever helmet, in memory of, uh, of Francois, as we mentioned in the video yesterday, who lost his life 50 years ago this month at Watkins Glen in the Tyrrell 1973 and I think today's performance by Pierre was a drive that Francois would have been very happy with. He drove well in that Alpine as did Alex Albon in the Williams who qualified well. Uh, the Williams very quick in the straight line, probably the quickest car in a straight line. Not too bad elsewhere and, uh, and making very good use of it. Logan Sargent looking a very poor second in the other car. Terrible weekend so far for Aston Martin. They did nothing yesterday. Massive brake problems, particularly front brake problems. They thought they'd cured that. They hadn't and they reoccurred in the race and the tyres went off. Lance Stroll ran ahead of Fernando Alonso a little bit, which would have done his confidence some good, I guess. But in the end, he was a lone retirement in the race with a brake problem and Fernando Alonso struggling as well, also with brake issues on the Aston Martin. Extraordinary. Nobody else seems to be having brake problems. And at that level, at the level at which Aston Martin have been operating since the start of the year, astonishing they would have so much brake trouble on that car. But it didn't look particularly quick, even when the brakes were running OK at the start of the race. So, yeah, very difficult weekend so far for Aston Martin. And a good comeback race for Daniel Ricciardo and the Alfa Tari, I thought. If you're going to have a circuit where Daniel's going to make his comeback, Austin is a good one for him. It's a good racer's circuit. Lots of things you can do there. And he looked like he was really enjoying himself in the Alpha Tower. He out-qualified Yuki Tsunoda in the shootout and yeah, out of the points, but about where you would expect Liam Lawson to have finished in that car. No, I shouldn't be saying that, but he did very well, I thought. Looked very good in the car. Good to have Daniel back in Formula One. So the major takeout, I think, from the sprint race, looking ahead now to the Grand Prix tomorrow, is how big the DRS effect is on this circuit. You've got Charles Leclerc with a top speed advantage on the pole tomorrow, but then you've got Lando Norris and Lewis Hamilton. The Mercedes a little bit slower than the McLaren if you take DRS out of the game. But if they're in the DRS area, they will be very close to the Ferrari. So it's going to be a tough race. It's going to be a tense race probably at the front. Meanwhile, there's half a chance, I guess, that Max Verstappen might start on the hard tyre if everybody else is on the medium, just to try to extend that first stint. And one of the reasons he might do that is because, as I mentioned yesterday, Red Bull on the Friday were the only team that went through the proper sequence of get the car sorted, put in a full tank run and then go out on the soft tyre. This is in the unofficial Friday session. And I didn't put these up yesterday because they're more significant for what might happen tomorrow. Look there at what Max Verstappen was doing on the hard tyre. He did a very good long run on that hard tyre. He has that information. And if that tyre is the one on which he starts, look how consistent he is on that 43.6, 42.9, 42.8, 42.8, 43.7, 42.5. 42 Sergio Perez also a pretty good run on the hard tyre as well and pretty quick right at the end too, 42.1. Lewis and George both did longish runs on Friday on the hard tyre as well. But as you can see, their lap times are suspiciously quick. So they probably had nothing like the same amount of fuel on board. But nonetheless, Lewis and George looking pretty good and that was an indication of how good the Mercedes is in general around Austin. If you take out this top line speed deficiency it's obviously a very good car in terms of its agility, its balance, its drivability and its consistency in terms of looking after its tyres. Look at that run by George Russell. Max took the pole for the shootout but it was a close run thing. Take a look at this. This is turn 18. This is the corner yesterday where he ran over that white line and lost his pole lap. And look at that margin he left. Left front just on the tarmac. What's that? Perfect judgment? Yeah, I guess it is. Perfect judgment. The shootout was based on medium tyres for SQ1 and SQ2. Soft tyres being used for the grid defining, or top 10 anyway, SQ3 which meant that we had an interesting comparison at the end of SQ2 on medium tyres, a snapshot perhaps of how uh, this may affect the race tomorrow, the pointer to the race tomorrow when no doubt the medium tyre will be in use. 
and you can see that's in the order in which they finished SQ2. Max ahead of the two Ferraris, Lando Norris, Sergio Perez, Oscar Piastri in the other car, and Pierre Gasly going well in the Alpine ahead of the two Mercedes. That was the end of SQ2. No surprise, as I say, to see Max Verstappen 25-5 in sector one. That's the one with the high speed change of direction through the S's. Charles Leclerc just a little bit slower. Uh, McLaren really good through there as well and Pierre Gasly very good through there in the Alpine. Max Verstappen 38-3 nobody quicker than Max in sector two but Lando Norris, Pierre Gasly, Lewis Hamilton not particularly quick 